Steve here from The Football Stop. Welcome back to another question and answer video. This is actually part two of October's Q&A because there was that many questions submitted. I felt like I needed to do a second video because what I didn't want to do was make an hour long video or an hour and a half long video of just question after question. I kind of really wanted to make sure the questions got enough attention, got a fair, a decent response. I hope that's the case anyway. So yeah, this is actually part two. This means the next Q&A will be in November. If you want your question answering and you haven't already had it answered, then please, what are you waiting for? Get in touch. Check us out on Instagram at the Football Stop. Drop me a message and I will do my best to answer your question in the November videos. So let's get started with this week's or this month's second lot of questions, I should say. So the first question comes from Flip Life King. Uh, Flip Life King asks Messi or Ronaldo? Squirtle, Bulbasaur or Charmander? So two parts to that question. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you. Um, first one, Messi or Ronaldo? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? Messi, Ronaldo, that's the question that ultimately divides workplaces, it divides friendship groups, it divides families ultimately. It's, a, it's the big question. I, don't, I hope people start to appreciate how lucky we are to have two players of such talent. Um, and either one of them is going to go or is a legend in terms of football in terms of soccer um, the way I'm going to answer it is first of all if I was stepping out into a football pitch personally I'd want to be playing with Ronaldo rather than Messi I just think Ronaldo is a, a winner uh, internationally he's had more success than Messi but what we're all here for is to talk about sports cards ultimately aren't we and from a sports card perspective personally I'd rather have the Ronaldo rookie, for example, in my collection, then Lionel Messi. Uh, Messi's got a wider variety of early cards than Ronaldo, but when we really focus in on that Ronaldo or Messi rookie, the reason I would opt for Ronaldo is again, coming back to that scarcity factor. The fact that that Ronaldo rookie was printed and distributed in Portugal in comparison to Messi's rookie, which was printed and distributed in Spain, straight away there, you'll probably have a larger distribution or larger amount of distribution uh, in Spain in comparison to Portugal, hence more scarcity in the Ronaldo front. So to answer that question, um, Ronaldo to both, I'd rather have Ronaldo in my team uh, and I'd rather have Ronaldo's rookie uh, in my PC uh, in comparison to Messi. That's not to say investing in Messi is not a bad idea. I just think really long term, Ronaldo um, will, will outpace him in terms of the, the value of the card. I also think it's important to think about the long term, the future of both players. The likelihood is they're probably going to retire at a similar at a similar point. Um, I can't see Messi moving into kind of a managerial role or kind of staying in football in a real kind of uh, significant way. I can, whereas in Ronaldo, for example, I can kind of see him going into a managerial role uh, somewhere like Real Madrid one day. Um, and like we've seen with Zidane, that just means that he attention is still in on that on that person so yeah Ronaldo would get get my um my vote for that so great question second part Pokemon it's the first Pokemon question I've answered on the football stop because obviously I'm predominantly about football and soccer Flip Life King obviously knows I'm a I do dabble in Pokemon I got involved in Pokemon way before the current hype thankfully um Pokemon was already pretty hyped up over the last 12 months for those I don't know but obviously, what's happened with Logan Paul and Logic and things like that has just kind of times that by a hundred. Obviously, with some of the some of the sales we've seen, um, I'll share this with you. So, just so you know, I'm not talking rubbish. This is my Pokemon collection. Missing the Zard, obviously. I'm missing two there, but as you can see, I quite like Pokemon as well. So yeah, um, but. To answer that, I think Charmander is probably the one from a financial point of view in terms of investing, in terms of long-term value, that I would want to have um, more of, I suppose, um, especially if it's the first edition or Shadowless. Um, but personal favourite would be Bulbasaur, sorry, Bulbasaur, would be Squirtle. Squirtle was the one that I always started the game with, uh, so when I used to play Pokemon Red and Blue on the Game Boy, um, good old days. So yeah. Um, thinking about that evolution aspect though, Charmander would get my vote in terms of financial. So yeah, thanks for the questions, Flip Life King. Um, keep checking us out. Um, question two is from ESCC Official. 
How's it going, mate? I know you, some, it's a great account. Love the, love the content there. So if you don't already, check out ESCC Official. Um, what is in your pers personal collection and why? Um, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't say there's like, I don't hone in on one particular player at the moment. Or I haven't done so far um, for various reasons. I think I kind of spread all over the place a little bit. Um, obviously, anything Pele, I tend to focus in on. Um, but the price point of his cards at the moment is just so high that building a decent PC is difficult. So I would say at the moment, uh, a lot of my cards, to be honest, are halfway across to America. Um, so Zidane, obviously, I've shown everyone this yesterday. Love Zidane. Um, this is someone I'm going to be focusing on a lot um, over the next few months because I just think his card price is going to go through the roof um, following what's happened with his sticker. So Zidane, as you can see, that's... The Panini, I think I've shared this before, so this is the Onze, uh, I've got a few other Zidans, so yeah, a big fan of Zidane in my collection, and obviously Ronaldo, Nazario, the original Ronaldo, for me, they, them kind of players, Zidane, Ronaldo, um, that, them 90s players, Maldini, um, Kaka, just, I mean Kaka's a bit late obviously, but like Batistuta, they for me were the players that I watched growing up uh, in my teenage years when I was kind of playing all, the most uh, football, soccer um, as a kid. And that's why I collect them, I have interest in them. And I think the fact that they also um, focus or appear on FIFA and things like that now are also a really good, a really good thing. So yeah, um, legends of the game from the 90s, I'd say. But if I had to pick two, it'd be Ronaldo and Zidane. I really hone in on um what about you, ESCC? Let me know in the comments below. Is there anyone that you kind of focus in on? Or are other people like me where you kind of spread your portfolio, if you like, uh, quite wide? Um, thanks for thanks for the uh, question there. Um, next question, Card Noob UK. <laughs> Do you think cards will ever become Tesco popular? So, I mean, I need to first of all explain that for anyone that's not in the UK. Uh, so Tesco for the American watches in particular, is kind of the equivalent of Walmart or um, Trader Joe's. Like a, It's kind of like a midpoint between like Walmart and Trader Joe's, but not as big as Walmart, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be the dream, wouldn't it? To be able to go into Tesco and pick up like a hobby box. No, well, not even a hobby box, but just to be able to go in and pick up like a, a, a pack of Chronicles or something like that. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, sadly. As we saw yesterday with the, the release of um, Museum, Collection Tops Museum, um, by the demand just ridiculous. Whilst everyone still values kind of autographs in particular, it's just impossible for these companies to manufacture cards in enough volume to start supplying the likes of Tesco, Asda, Morrisons. These are big UK supermarkets, but you can apply this to any major shop in your com the country you're watching this from sadly i don't i don't think it is going to happen i think this is a real issue i think it's something that if if this higher end um kind of investment aspect of the hobby is going to grow in europe this is something that manufacturers really need to start considering because at the moment it's just frustrating a lot of people uh not being able to get their hands on products partly because it's all online the releases are so quick you've got second to buy them literally um obviously we've got we can get uh soccer card products in the uk in shops just for anyone that's not aware of this so you can go into most shops even your corner shops so the little shops which sell kind of like sweets and stuff like that um you can go in and get like match attacks and panini adrenaline they're just the problem is that them products are just not sought after by the collector market the investment market the grading market at the moment I mean, what would be brilliant is if Panini in particular started to realise this and started to create designs that are more aesthetically pleasing and kind of get interest from both those people that want to collect, so your adrenaline collectors and typically younger kids at the moment, but also the market that are into the investment uh, and flipping kind of thing. So, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see if that happens. I am starting to see, I think adrenaline this year looks much better than it has done previously. I think every time the product changes, it's getting better. There's a new release in November, which I'm actually going to do a box opening on because I think so far, I think it's adrenaline plus or something. I think it looks really good. Um, so yeah, don't forget you can go and buy that. But to answer your question, 
no, I don't think we're going to be able to see any other higher end products, uh, the likes of Prism, Chronicles, anytime soon. I mean, it'd just be nice to see Prism in the UK, wouldn't it? It'd be nice just to see a high end Panini hobby box available from Panini's UK site rather than just being able to collect them poke the Haunter stickers or something from it. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, Top Summer are absolutely smashing it. Panini really need to pick up the pace and rely on too much on stickers. Um, thanks for the question anyway. If you want to follow up on that, give me a shout. Uh, question for Silvio, uh, so, Silvio Vich, sorry if I don't say this, Silvio, you'll know who you are. I'll put your link, uh, I'll put your Instagram below. For someone that's new to soccer cards, what would you recommend? Um, I mean, this gets asked all the time, all the time. Um, and not just to me, but to every other kind of like social media, football, soccer card person all the time. I feel like the way you've asked the question suggests that you already know quite a lot about football because you've asked specifically about soccer cards. But if you don't already know about football, about soccer, about the leagues, the players, the competitions, that is your first point of call to go and figure out them things. Because if you don't know that, you shouldn't be buying soccer cards. Presuming you know them, I would say, first of all, you just need to take time. Most of all, take your time. Don't rush into it. Watch the market. Don't jump in. Watch the market. Watch what price is going up and what price is coming down. Start to learn the products, the manufacturers. Follow people on social media like myself, the Football Stop, Card Hour, ESCC, who I've just mentioned. Um, some great accounts out there. So follow them and start learning about who people are interested in. I mean, ultimately... It's about human behaviour. Um, this is actually why I think I'm doing okay at this because my full-time job is heavily based on psychology and human behaviour. I think it's about behaviours in terms of intu an intuition, knowing how how people are going to react to a certain player over a season and in what points in the season people are going to start hyping up one player in comparison to another. So yeah, learn the bland brands, learn the manufacturers, the rarity, the pop aspect, learn how cards go up and down. It's not an overnight thing. It's not a weekly thing. This is, if you want to make money from sports car investing, you need to be in it heavy. Um, and if you don't believe me, then that's fine. But that's my recommendation. Uh, so thanks, Silvio, for that question. <clears throat> question number five. What are your thoughts on Bowman? Sorry, I don't have a name for this. I'll try and hit the uh, your Instagram link below if I can. Um, what are your thoughts on MLS Bowman 2020 tops now? Um, so yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, this was, when did they release this? Maybe like three, four months ago, I want to say. Uh, Bowman is the brand behind a lot of baseball cards that are really popular in America. Tops have basically tried to do something with their license. So Tops have the license for the MLS, Panini don't, Upper Deck don't, um, Fitera don't. Um, so yeah, Tops are trying to basically make something of that license, aren't they, with this MLS Bowman print. With it being tops now, that means it's a limited set. So that's attractive to some people, I suppose. I personally was going to buy them and then I backed away from it because they they weren't expensive, but they also weren't cheap. Remember, I'm from Europe. So for me, and I, I might be shout out, give me a comment if I'm wrong here, but from a European perspective, I couldn't give a toss about the MLS at the moment. Um, I mean, ultimately, if I was buying... The Bowman packs, Tops and MLS Bowman, I'd be doing so on the basis, on the, in the hope that some a player in that league makes it big and moves to Europe. And like like we're starting to see with some American players now, like we're seeing um, Alfonso Davis, for example, coming from Vancouver into the Bundesliga. So, but I mean, that would be prospecting on the most kind of like, rant, like that is shot in the dark, like, praying isn't it i mean i just think there's better way better things to do with your money if that's what you want to do um but at the same time i think it's i mean i'd be really interested to know i can't answer that question really because i've got no interest in it i don't know what the european collectors think i'd be really interested to know so let me know in the comments and also how from an american's perspective if you're watching this how has mls bowman tops now gone down in terms of soccer product in the us i'd be really interested to know uh, so please Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think to that. So, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, they're my thoughts. I can't really answer anything about it. But, yeah, gives you gives you an idea what I'm thinking. Um, question number six, electrifying cards. 
can you give me more information about the Mbappe backs of stickers? Um, so I've mentioned this before, I posted about this a while ago, probably about a month ago on the Football Stop Instagram account, um, where I basically highlighted four or five differences, I think it was, on the backs of Panini 2018 World Cup stickers, that's the Russian set. Um, and it seems like people weren't aware of this. I think a lot of people were buying these and buying them predominantly from their own countries. So all of a sudden when a sticker with a black back turned up and then someone else turned it with a pink back and then someone else turned it with a gold back. Everyone was just like, what the hell's going on? So again, it comes back to doing your research. In short, this isn't a video that's gonna be long enough to go into these in detail. Um, I am planning on doing a video on this, but it's going I want it to be visual, I want it to be done properly. And there are so many different backs and varieties out there that it is a full video. So bear with me with that. Um, can you give me more information? I mean, in a nutshell, this is what I can give you today. There are black ones, there are pink ones, there are some that have uh, gold editions, so these were printed predominantly, well, just in Switzerland. Um, there are ones that are gold editions that don't have the gold edition stamp on the reverse because they were released only in French supermarkets. There are ones that have got a black back, I think it is, but then have Industria Argentina on it. There are ones that are made in Brazil. There are ones made in Italy one's made in the USA, there are specific country versions, there are so many variations that it's just impossible to answer this question, but hopefully that just gives you an idea. Um, my my recommendation would be to just to start Googling, start Googling it, start going through eBay and just search um, Mbappe, Panini, Black, Pink, uh, Gold, uh, just things like that, and you'll start to see all the different varieties. Like I said, I'll try to do it uh, in another video. In fact, electrifying cards this is from. If you do want to drop me a message on Instagram and this is something you're interested in doing, maybe we could do it together. It'd be really interesting to kind of go through it, uh, get someone involved. I've already got one Mbappe collector who is on a mission to have every single Mbappe product out there. Um, so maybe we could do it all together. It'd be really interesting. On another note, just because we're on the topic of uh, Panini and Russia uh, albums, uh, there are two album lengths to be aware of. So one album length has 672 stickers, the other has 682, uh, 670, 682, sorry. Um, important to know because if you buy stickers from another country for an album completion to stick them in, you might get stickers with a different number on the back. Um, so yeah, I'm not going into more detail about that, but just check it out. Uh, Panini 2018 Russia uh, album varieties because they are different in their numbers thanks for the question hopefully we'll get in touch and uh, we can build on that a little bit um next question number seven um I'm, I've, i know the hash i know the account that's done this but because i want this to be child friendly uh, or as child friendly as possible i'm not going to put your account name in funny as it is but it's just not i can't put it in sorry about that um is soccer vintage extremely undervalued it's a great question so i did put this in my answer is yes and no. Um, yes and no, because some some vintage stuff is massively, massively undervalued still, massively undervalued. Um, the reason being that we have no idea of how many actually exist, but we know there's not many. So examples, and I really when I'm talking vintage and when I'm giving examples about how, how few there are in the population, I'm talking about kind of like pre-Second World War stuff, particularly from Germany. Um, I'm talking about stuff from Yugoslavia, which is obviously later on. I'm talking about like East Germany. I'm talking about stuff that is from countries that have basically been firebombed. And it's amazing that cards have got out of that country intact. Um, and at that point, when there are so few, that's when vintage cards are massively, massively undervalued. So, for example, I think it's a 1938 Koenig Fussball collection, which has like a Dixie Dean in it. Don't get me wrong, they're not cheap. But when you compare them to some baseball cards that have similar kind of populations, so unvalued in my opinion, because at the moment, there's still such a small minority of people that are actually focused in and aware of products like that. Uh, but more and more, high-end collectors are really starting to move on these. And high-end collectors from the Middle East in particular are buying stuff like this. This is honestly true. Buying stuff like this and tucking it away in vaults um, because most people aren't aware of it. But obviously, 
as the market's growing, people are starting to do more and more research and starting to realise that actually there are cards out there that are rare, as rare as they come. Uh, I mean, not quite to the levels of the Hornus Wagner, for example, which is just kind of a like ridiculous. But I would say there's probably not far off for some, uh, particularly pre World War, like I said. Billy Meredith cigarettes cards, things like that. I still think they're not cheap, but they are undervalued. On the flip side, there are also vintage card stickers that are overpriced in my opinion because everyone has like made their own decision about what is classed as vintage and just gone on PSA pop reports, SGC pop reports and stuff like that um, and thought, well, I'm going to buy this Stanley Matthews card at like 180 because that's cheap when actually a lot of older collectors are laughing at this because there's so many out there. So, yeah... I think it, it's just so important to understand the distribution of the product it's, and just don't don't go off PSA reports for vintage soccer cards because, like I say, there's a lot of people that are a lot older than most of us that have been collecting this stuff for over 50 years and are sat laughing because cards they were buying six months ago for £5, five, like $7, are now selling at like $200. So, yeah, I think it's a real mix. Um so yeah, yes to some, no to, no to others. Um, so I hope that gives you something to think about. Um, if you're not aware of Koenig Football, check it out. It's a great set. Um, some other sets you might want to check out. Taddy cigarette cards, 1902 cigarette card sets, things like that. So rare, so undervalued. Um, I think that that's going to keep going up in value. Um, final question from Coffee and Cardboard. Uh, this is a great question. Uh, and yeah, this is the last one. Will Euro 20, do I think, will it go ahead? I don't know if it'll go ahead. I'm not in charge. Uh, but will do I think Euro 2021 will go ahead? And secondly, if a major competition such as this is cancelled, what impact do you think it would have? Good question. Do I think it'll go ahead? Yes, I do. I think Euro 2021 will go ahead. I think obviously that's depending on COVID. Um, I think we'll have a vaccine by then. Um simple as that so i think yes it'll go ahead most major sporting tournaments are going ahead as it is um so i just think even if they did it behind closed doors which they may have to do um i think it'll go ahead in some in some capacity i think we'll have smaller crowds i don't think we'll have full stadiums um but yeah i think it'll go ahead um if it was cancelled or if a major tournament was cancelled what impact on the sports card or soccer card market that's an amazing question Depends on the competition. So we'll take internationals. Uh, I'll just share my thoughts on that. So Euro, if it was the European Championships 2021, if that did get cancelled, for example, I don't think the impact on the sports card market would be massive because most of the players that are playing in in European competitions are already at massive, already at major teams. Um, there's there's very little to be gained from it. I just don't think we'll see such a big interest off it obviously you get global interest uh, but not to the extent of a world cup um so i don't think european championships being cancelled would have that bigger impact on the other side of things if for example america 2026 and qatar got cancelled that would have a massive massive impact i think uh, in two ways i think a lot of people myself included are buying investing and tucking things away um ready to sell at that point because we're in, we're expecting this influx of new investors collectors hobby collectors uh interest basically uh around those competitions so if they didn't go ahead it'd have an impact because there'd be less people entering the market simple as that um america in particular 2026 world cup if that did not happen i mean like it just takes so much emphasis off off the game wouldn't it the game America's um, obviously one of the biggest countries in the world. Soccer is still not a ma um, its main sport. It's growing uh, rapidly, isn't it, obviously? Um, and I just think 2026 has the potential to see that ramp up big time. Uh, so if it got cancelled, I think that's... It's not an immediate... I wouldn't say it's a direct impact on the uh, soccer card marketplace. The direct impact would actually be on interest in soccer, in football. And indirectly, eventually, that would have an impact on on soccer cards and on the marketplace uh, as we know at the moment so yeah my answer is no to the european championships if they were cancelled but a big yes to world cups over the next uh six years is it qatar 2022 and 26 america so yeah 
So that answers all your questions or hopefully answers some of your questions, shares my thoughts at least. And it's good just to talk to everyone about thoughts and kind of how things are going at the moment. Um, if this is your first time here, then I hope you like the video. If you haven't, then please hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Um, most of my content, as I've said before, goes out on Instagram at the football stop. So check that out. Um, almost at 1500 followers, which is amazing. The comments I'm getting on the videos are fantastic. So much support. Um, and it's brilliant. I love all the engagement and hopefully this is only the start. Uh, the aim is 10,000 subscribers. I'm not joking. Up there one day, there will be a YouTube 10,000 subscriber button. I am absolutely convinced about that. Um, and things are only going to keep getting better. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and uh, take care. Bye bye.